All right, and welcome back to the Hard West. If you are a fan of Western games, uh, this is for you. And after we failed the first attempt, I just replayed the scenario exactly to here. However, I noticed that there are a couple of random elements which I wanted to let you know, so we're uh, being caught up. Everything is uh, similar to what you would know. I've done the same decisions, but this time we received a different uh, wound. Uh, we haven't lost a finger, but we lost a couple of organs, which means Warren <coughs> actually has a permanent regeneration. Wonderful. I really like that effect. Very, very good. If we look at our card screen, there's also something different. We don't have the five cards for the father for the regeneration. Instead, we received similar cards, and the father is now um, running around with a massive uh, bonus HP can gain uh, demonic strength and uh, can eat human flesh to restore health. So he's kind of the frontliner never, uh, nevertheless. Uh, we do have a bit lower, uh, a bit less luck on the other cards. Um, we still haven't gotten the golden shot. Instead we got prayer, which is a straight up luck bonus. Uh, we again got the joker and we got an, a card which lets us uh, passively slip under the radar of the enemy and ignore them in the setup stage. Everything else is uh, similar. So we do have uh, still the father, Warren, uh, Florence and the old man. This time I reversed the roles a bit since the old man is technically someone who is expendable. He will be more of a frontline fighter together with father and Florence and Warren will actually stay further back. Yeah, and that's really it. I haven't done much else that there is just slight deviations in, in the boots that people are wearing, but uh, it's really the same. So, Crime Lord, um, uh, try number two, and this time we're not going to fail. Let's proceed to combat and take revenge for what they've done. It was an ambush. They knew you were coming. I just realized we do not have Shriek anymore. So our really nice ability of running in and basically killing everyone off from the start no longer works. Instead, we're taking the snipers into uh, decent positions. Let's see, we could hit all three of them here. Florence has an elephant rifle as well, so she's going to be the second one taking a defensive position here. Killing the first target. We're going to position ourselves in cover. And I think it's really a shame that, that we can't uh, hit them fully in cover. Hmm. So here we would uh, get a, a reaction shot from above definitely not what we would want to have. We could probably move in here and just uh, flank them. Problem is we could get flanked from the other side. It's just a really bad position to be in. This here on the other side is a pretty good position. Basically killing off all of the bandits on top there. And since we can't hit anyone else, we might as well end the turn. Interesting. So we can see the enemy is definitely 
trying to aggressively move. Moving over here. Taking a shot. Snipers are out of ammunition. Sniper rifles only have one uh, one shot, so they are really sta station uh, stationary. I mean, we could move in, but I'm not sure how many enemies are going to be in the inner core, right? So moving in is a very dangerous and aggressive move. I think that's uh, probably not a good idea. On the other hand, old Ike is really in a tough spot here. He can be flanked from here. People can come around that corner. Extending in here would actually help him. But the last time I noticed that there was still someone around here. So might as well be a bad idea to... to Go aggressive with him. Thirty-nine percent chance to hit him in cover. Let's try to do this. Didn't work out. Two damage is not enough. Unfortunately, we also don't have another. We also don't have another uh, target. We only have him really, and that's about it. This guy here moved into full cover, and is out of line of sight. Golden bullet would be helpful here, but we clearly don't have that. So let's keep our positions. I think overall we're fine. Chance to hit zero percent. If I shoot at him, he'll get luck back, which I think is not very wise. So we might as well not shoot at him for now. It's almost out of luck, as you can see here in the enemy display, uh, display bar. So we're just waiting. There's the flank. Definitely need to deal with this guy. And with a nine hit point, uh, with a nine hit point boss that has just shown up here, Lucio Molena. Let's hit him. Nice little shot for eight. We can maybe even kill Lucio. Let's first kill this guy over here. All right. And then kill Lucio. Oh, wow, we missed him thrice. Interesting. We're covering our flanks. Lucio gets into cover as well. Takes the first shot. And it's truly interesting because the father back here is just hopping from cover to cover Our enemies met their end. and their taking out all of the enemies. Dwindled. 
All right, Warren finishes the boss. Finally, you took down the most vicious among them. We're going to reduce this. Oh, can't uh, fan him. I, I was about to say, let's do three shots with fanning and reduce his luck. But that apparently doesn't work. What we can do though is... We can soften him up. Nice little shot. And I think we're still standing here. I mean, it's a position where we are uh, where we are exposed and pretty much nailed down, but it also covers so much ground, like all of this here is very well covered. Guess what, we're reloading and we're going to take a shot at her. The father has single-handedly killed the whole house with everyone in it. Interesting. All right, Warren reloads and I think we're, we're having the number advantage here. Florence reloads. chance to find some semblance of normalcy. Mission completed, guys. Finally. I'm so sorry for uh, noobishly running into the auto-fire the last time. Like, I have totally not seen that. Good. We got ourselves a pair of snake leather boots and we received a couple of cards. Uh, let's take a look. So snake leather boots, um, we already have a pair of those, plus one damage, plus six movement, and minus one HP. Perfect boots for, I would say, melee-ish characters, or characters that are up in the front. Uh, the only downturn is the low HP, but like the movement itself, six movement is just phenomenal. Uh, you can get around so fast. You've seen it with the father. He was running from cover to cover and effectively just um, uh, just protecting the flanks really, really well. I think uh, the character did extremely well in the last fight. And maybe we use uh, the boots on the old man. Uh, he has clearly less HP, uh, so it's a bit more dangerous, but he's not an essential character, so if he dies, um, it's not game over for us. We got a couple new cards. Card number one, 10 of clubs. Survive a fatal shot. If you kill your killer, you'll make it, otherwise you'll die. <laughs> okay. That is so awesome. In so many regards. I already love it. Uh, the second one is Nine of Diamonds. Um, exchange health with a, uh, with a target character. Ooh, ooh, that is great. So, by the way, we do have three of a kind now with him and with the joker we even have four of a kind which gives him plus 15 aim wow that's that's awesome gosh that's really good i like the survive a fatal shot thing and we got chain kill. Kill an enemy to get a chance to kill another and another. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. So that's two pair, which will give him plus 10 defense. I think we need to help Florence also a little bit, so maybe we'll give her the cards. 
because she's currently also an essential character and her dying would be a bit of a problem. Well, that is nice. Kill an enemy to get a chance to kill another enemy and another enemy. Yeah, great cards. I like it. Well worth the time investment. Good, so with that out of the way, we need to find a way to lift the curse. And I think the fortune teller can help us with that. You found the hut inhabited by a young woman. Rumors have she uh, rumors said she could see the future. You uh, ask her how she would uh, how much she would charge in order to lift the curse. She took the money eagerly, but uh, though she tried a range of methods, none of them were effective. Father's curse made uh, prospecting impossible. Whatever methods you tried, whatever places you sought, nothing worked. The situation was hopeless, um, though you never said it. His guilt was clear, which made him uh, many silent evenings. One day you awoke with a note from your father. He was sorry for the bad decisions he'd made. He was sorry for your mother, for Florence. Uh, he loved you and uh, that means he had to leave. If only it had helped. Which leaves us I think with three characters. Although we had picked up um, a shady wanderer so maybe that'll be the fourth character the father by far was our strongest character in the group it really sucks to see him leave that is very unfortunate I mean we can give the cards that he had to another character so that shouldn't be an issue but still, his stats were pretty good. I think he had a very high aim, he had very high hit points in general. So that wasn't too bad. Okay, so we're now down to three characters. Yeah, I mean... Um, So looking at the situation, I think we're going to redefine the roles a little bit. And Warren is going to be the next frontliner with four nine, uh, Niner cards. Uh, he has uh, nine hit points now, he regenerates, he has a lot of luck, a um, lot of movement, decent defense, so that should be fine. Giving him also different sets of weapon now. Come on, game. I don't know why the inventory is so uh, so slow. Like I'm clicking in it just takes a while to, to even recognize it. Everything else runs fine, but the inventory seems to be a bit messed up. Anyway, so we're giving him the Navy gun and the Western rifle, similar to what his old father had uh, used. We're exchanging her guns with the musket, and we're actually all giving him the elephant rifle, which is fine. Just need to be a bit careful. Our snipers do not have that many hit points, we just need to leave them in the back. But we should be fine. Come on, for the love of God. Just get your act together again. That's the only thing uh, which seems to be mildly off. I don't know if I'm the only one uh, with the issue of having long inventory loading and after this scenario I will definitely look into a, a hotfix maybe that's available.
So you ask for a curse exorcism. You paid your money, but you would later discover it had no effect. And last but not least, you drop a coin of good luck. Just when you thought things couldn't get worse, we return to the hard day's work to find thugs are raiding your house. You scouted from a safe distance that they would pay for this with their lives. And that's the siege for your homestead, the last thing that will happen here. Let me double check how we can. So you visited the small frontier town made out up mostly by miners. You paid for information ab about additional mining spots. Thank you. You visited the small frontier town and... You inquired about special mining tools. And you hung, uh, hire a young miner to help prospecting. As long as he's there, we'll get additional income. And I think also that Pat Douglas is going to be a character that is helping us. So, we got the shovel pit. And I think we even get some more sites. Most of the sites are dug down. Um, you can see that we're still having 13 sites down here. And now um, most of them are down to most of them are down to um, the third, the lowest level. Let's see what we've discovered here. We've discovered Bonanza. We already have mined that to the lowest uh, level. We've got a new mine here. And we seem to be a bit unlucky, uh, unlucky with it. Slowly but surely, getting some money out of that, uh, out of these. So, um, these here, these shops. Will offer you drills. Uh, will offer you special um, special tools. So the way it works is, if you look at the mine, you can either pay 100 to get the hard rock uh, gold, and we haven't even upgraded that yet. Or you can consider using unconventional extraction methods, which is a nicer way of saying you need a special tool. Special tools are being displayed in the bottom left corner. Uh, the mercury, the drill, the stamp, uh, the stamp mill, and the hydrojet. I don't know if every mine has kind of a, a best possible tool, but the tools def definitely have different abilities. So let's start with hydraulic. Uh, you have rented a hydrojet to move to the deeper gold deposits, uh, to the uh, to move the deeper gold deposits to the surface. Uh, the partners that operated um, had made a small fortune selling their service. So we can now technically rent that. Um, we can also, the company was nearly bankrupt, but it still rented out the drills that had it used back when it was going in concern. Uh, Casey still ran the operations and, ren uh, and rentals were letting him get uh, the business afloat again. Uh, McCrum's drills allowed miners to collect hard rock gold and place her deposit all at once. So uh, we have already um, gotten all of the um, placers and hard rock gold, so we don't need that. Massive bourgeois led a massive enterprise that has rendered out portable stamp mills. The mills crushed the quartz, allowing hard rock deposits to be collected at the same way deeper dis uh, deposits were uh, obtained, letting you extract deeper deposits using surface methods. That's probably what we would need because we already have um, 
we would uh, we already um, have better uh, methods or better surface methods so allowing you allowing hard rock deposits which are the lowest ones to be collected the same way that deeper do, uh, deposits were obtained so let's rent uh, this mill we're paying 90 for it and we can now go to one of the dig sites and start using uh, unconventional methods use the stamp mill to move the hard rock to the deeper deposits so the stamp mill worked uh, though the hard rocks to the deeper rocks making them easier to rinse and place their gold the dig had been prepped but never started everyone said it was bad luck now we still gained a profit of 128 but we lost our stamp mill well i think that was uh, that was uh, valuable there is um, an interesting alternative the shop features all kinds of drugs and chemicals uh, they cook, uh, took great care in plenty of copper slabs uh, uh, miners used them to quickly acquire placer gold and deep gold this technique uh, while expedient often resulted in accidental poisoning I've done that in the first playthrough and I'll stick away from accidental poisoning because it reduces your hit points by two or three, which is really, really bad. So let me read the hydraulic uh, real quick, uh, one, uh, real uh, quick again. Um, Hydrojack moving deeper gold deposits to the surface. Yeah, we don't need that because uh, we need the harder, uh, the harder ones. Uh, drills allow miners to collect hard rock gold and placer deposits all at once. Yeah, we have gotten all of the placer deposits already. So, by definition, we need to have these here. So let's rent. No, no, oh my god. I clicked the wrong uh, the wrong option. We don't want to just excavate it. Of course, we want to use the tool. So, use the stamp mill, rise, and get the bonus. Well, that was not very profitable. I'm not sure how profitable the lower parts actually are with the tools. Sometimes we're making a a good fortune of it sometimes we aren't it seems to be quite random very high variance here yeah this here was a another loss let's try it one more time The problem is that these uh, renting costs are just extremely expensive. Yeah, I think it's, it's not worth it. Might want to just take it with the normal methods. Yeah, that was a decent... Um, a decent revenue out of it. I think we're still having two more mines. Give me a second. Treasure trove here seems to be it. Wow, that was that was really good. 512. All right, that was pretty pretty good. And there was one last mining license. So we're now at 1,190. We can't buy carts. Uh, there is a small house here of the poor family. The small bridges, they told you they were trying to leave. Let's give them 200 because Warren is a nice guy and see what, uh, what, that, would, uh, what that would offer us.
They were very grateful, said they would pray for you, which is nice. But whom are we kidding? Okay, the game just clearly made fun of me. Well, we received an item, the lucky horseshoe. With 20 maximum luck, that is nothing to sneeze at. It's actually a pretty decent item. That is actually a pretty decent item. Um, I think we're going to give it to one of one of the, the no-name characters. 20 maximum luck isn't bad, specifically if you have a lot of skills that require luck. Because it, you can reuse them more often. I've just decided, by the way, since our vital character Florence has only three hit points, we might want to give her the cards that offer her to, to fly under the radar. That's probably helpful. So we're currently opening the card stash. And we are very close to the last uh, fight, which I decided we're putting into this episode just to motivate you guys. And we do have four episodes for one scenario. And yeah, here we go. So this, uh, this one uh, ignores enemy in the setup stage. Yes and yes. Plus it offers you plus two movement. And she has plus 10 defense because she has two pairs, two queens and two tens. Uh, gives her two pairs. She has a high movement, uh, which means we can even exchange her boots for um, for the horseshoe. Because she's a sniper and as a sniper she needs a lot of luck. And luck um, will give her the option to use her, uh, use her special shots. So... Once I'm allowed to click on the character, I'll do so. I think both of our main characters have a pretty decent hand. One is four of a kind, which is an awesome hand, plus one hit point per turn. And just a lot of aim. That's great. The other one has a lot of defense. That's good as well, because she uh, will be... Defense will be deducted whenever someone's trying to attack her. There we go. Let's also give her some healing herbs. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. We can give this pair of boots to Pat Douglas, one of our no-name characters, who is now able to run even uh, faster. So, remember how I was stin uh, so stingy and did not want to um, did not want to buy the tunnel for uh, Homestead? Well, it's going to bite us in the ass now. Because from far, far uh, from far away, you can see armed thugs roaming home, uh, homestead, and boy, oh boy, we're going to attack! As you prepare to make your move, uh, the slaves were sheltered and came out of hiding. They had been working on the fields when you saw armed men approaching. He was not in a condition to fight, but gave you the charm that kept him alive until now. So. We do have a talisman with a fallen gunslinger's uh, eye embedded on it, plus 10 uh, aim and minus 5 defense, which I think is perfect for a sniper. I don't know, I the plus 20 luck isn't bad, but I think the plus 10 aim is better. And the lucky horseshoe could be something that we're giving pet pet you need definitely need some luck so let's go last combat guys they will learn soon enough what happens when you're trying to take a man's home oh yeah they will you would fight for your own and take back what was yours all right our, uh, our main characters are back here which is great
so we're moving in uh, with old uh, like here our sniper takes a decent position and spots out many of them in uh, cover actually a lot of them in cover last time I had screech which was perfect because you could just screech and all of them were losing three hit points such a strong ability uh, if you know how to use it All right, we're moving up. Oh, Pat only has shotguns. <laughs> well, I probably should have given him a, a decent ranged weapon. Well, Pat, joke's on you. I can tell you, we're definitely going to, to hit someone today. So Warren moves into full cover out of line of sight. I want to go in uh, more aggressive next turn with him. And we're taking a full cover with our sniper here. And now it's time to take some shots. I like the chain kill option. Probably next turn we're going to go for prayer. There's no option for ricochet. Well, this here would be a ricochet, but we would need to be in line of sight. I think we would need to move over here. We can do that next turn. All right, for now, let's hit them. All of these guys are unfortunately in full cover. So we're just draining their luck for now. They are focusing fire on the old man. But that's fine. I don't mind. So far we are good. Moving over here, switching weapons. Next turn, we're going to use ricochet shot. Let's get the guy up on the first floor. Old Ike is down to two. Um, luck so he's going to be hit next uh, with the next shot anyways again that's generally okay I would want to go to the front problem that, I, that I'm seeing is this guy could flank us and take a decent shot that's the only issue once this guy is gone I can move up For now, we're staying in full cover. And again, let's focus on the guy upstairs. Hmm. 
Hmm. You know what? We're taking a 100% shot. And I'd like to do this against the guy downstairs because he still has the armor. That was actually not bad. Reloading and let's continue with this guy. We're not going to hit, uh, hit him, we're just going to drain his luck. He needs one more hit and then he's gone. The old man definitely needs to move back. So a couple of things we're moving to here. Is this going to provoke? You're always seeing it so late, like that is bullshit. Uh, anyways, I'm not going to complain. I've, I'm still learning the game. Apparently you can't move next to someone with, uh, with a gun drawn. Like he will abuse that fact. We're down to three, just lost one of the characters Moving in more aggressively. I want to kill the guy that's flanking here. Might be more difficult than I would expect. Moving over. Let's try to kill this guy. There we go. One down. I'm a bit miffed about losing uh, one of our uh, soldiers that early. Shot. Very good. The old man still got it. We need to make sure that we're using our healing uh, reserves wisely. So that's the relict. Just healing up the old man.
so if we were this here is completely useless uh, I can't ricochet off of anything that's unfortunate yeah I wish we would have the golden uh, the golden uh, bullet that would definitely help getting rid of these guys so far Let's pray for some powerful uh, bonuses. We got Blessed Aim, which gives us probably an Aim bonus. And we're reloading our Sniper Rifle. And that was a mistake, my friend. You just decided to stand in the open huge mistake there we go invader killed slowly but surely moving our sniper further to the front the old man he's reloading his gun that's fine I want to be a bit mindful that we're not being flanked from here moving in just to get a solid extra position and I think we're going to leave it at that unfortunately we can't move up further might as well move her a bit closer over here So we can't approach this guy either. He will automatically shoot. Fair enough. Could move the old man over here. Basically offering a good target for this guy. Moving over here would be too risky. This here unfortunately is not a flank and uh, contrary to XCOM you can't just move in and just jump through the window. So I guess since this guy still has about 50 luck left over we might want to deplete it with a couple of um, shots from the pistol. Followed up with, we still can't ricochet him. Probably we're just going to use the pistol as well. And the grandpa moves over here, still giving him no line of sight. That's unfortunate. Alright, that was a mistake, so now we can move in. That's an aggressive position, and one which allows us to even see two of them. Okay, good enough. Start with the guy that's potentially flanking us. Invader is killed. I 
would like to go over here just to make sure that our flank is being secured. We haven't seen anyone from here, but maybe someone's moving around the house. Since you are you're not really seeing the enemy unless uh, they make sounds, it's pretty good to to get an understanding. Uh, to get an understanding. And one of the things that I already learned is don't just stand in long hallways, right? Uh, that usually means you're going to be easy prey. Okay, so we can see that there are quite some enemies back there. The old man tanks, uh, takes the chance of... Oh, wow, there was yet another one. to flank them but we have seen that there is a guy literally in here they moved away from the thing the old man moves into full cover sees that guy but I do have an idea how we can deal with him because he has not protected his flank which means we're moving in and we're out of ammunition. Oh my god. We're moving in and we're using our gun. Are you kidding me? There we go. Invader was killed. Loading the gun. It's dangerous. If I move her here, they could have already gone around the house. So the uh, that's the interesting part. It's so mobile. Um, the the enemy effectively also tries to outflank you, right? So what we're trying to do is taking secure positions. We know that one of them is there. So we are going to surround the house slowly but surely. Fortunately, there is no cover here. This guy standing there means this is maybe a flank, but you never know. And there was a second one around, so let's just reload and wait for them to show themselves. Changing sides again. Hmm. I, I really don't want to run into into his line of fire there. A 
Okay, better. Much better. But this guy just completely blew his cover. That was not clever. Um, because now... We have Florence here with a follow-up. Wait a second, before we do that, how about we also have Warren here with a follow-up. What you didn't know at the time was that there's one down. Lorenz takes the guy at the window. Who, by the way, has been waiting for, uh, for us to step, no uh, to step out. Every man you killed raised the reward on your head a little higher. Because now you are a wanted man. An outlaw. Right, that was very good. We brought them together, that they couldn't really move anywhere else, and then we executed them. Florence is going to keep her position there because I think that she actually is positioned super well. We can look into the next uh, next floor, and yeah, we're going to go upstairs very soon. Everyone reloads their weapons. And there's uh, the enemy. Care uh, we need to be careful with the positioning here. Because, look at that, I mean, the enemy could maybe even walk up to here, easily walk up to here and take shots, and there is really no good cover. The only place that's really solidly covered is the one that we just occupied. Um, Moving Florence out to have a line of sight on, uh, on this woman, and we have another line of sight. We're moving him out. That way, we got the windows covered. Florence takes the beating, but that's it. This guy is toast now. My every last thug was silenced. There we go. The of your situation finally hit home. You had to run. Welcome to hard times. So that was the first scenario. And we're going to continue the campaign the next time. Um, with either Methods of Madness, which seems to be kind of a story in itself, or with As Good As Dead. Both well, seems to be interesting, and we've definitely, I've definitely enjoyed the first one, so we're going to see which one we're playing next. Um, the story is awesome, I love it, and I'm going to see you guys in the next episode of Hard West. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. I cannot repeat it often enough. It signals YouTube that you enjoy the content and that would uh, do me a favor. Thank you and have a great day.